Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome back to the Forever Oz Bar. You've got the mic working. Let's hope so. Can you hear me? So, um, another huge game for the club today. As you know, what I will, I'll start by saying to you guys, your support has been absolutely incredible for Marty and the boys. You know, give... Yes! We've got ourselves into a really good position, but there's still work to be done. So get behind the team today. Let's get some more points on the board and let's see where we are. In keeping with what we've done this season for the Forever Rs bar, you know, we, we're very proud of the Forever Rs. What we do with our former players now, it works so well because of the support we get from you guys. We've had many of the guys back in here before games um, this season, which goes down really well. We've got another QPR legend, not only at the game today, um, he, lives, he lives abroad, so when he comes we have to, we have to grab him quite quickly, literally. So uh, it's a player, it's a QPR legend, signed in 1990, in uh, 1980, sorry, by the late, late and the great Terry Venables, £270,000, made 177 appearances in total, scoring 65 goals, played in a real great era for the club where we were in the FA Cup final, part of the team who won Division 2 in 82-83, part of the team that finished 5th in Division 1, qualified for Europe. Please give it up for a massive welcome for Simon Stainwell! Great to see you back, uh, looking well. You know, you've just walked into the Forever Ours bar. What does that reception mean to you? Got cheesy, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, too much, thanks. And, uh, you know, it's, it, for me, it's always my special club, QPR. So to get that reception, thanks. Brilliant. Well, I've just really let you, you, your time with us, you know. Um, your appearances, your goals, FA Cup final, Division 2 winning team, finished fifth, played in Europe. Great times for the club, but great times for you. How do you reflect on your time here? Well, I came from Oldham, like, you know, a small club in the same division at the time, but it's all the QPR. I got other clubs looking at me, turned Chelsea down. To play. Hey! And, uh, QPR are a much bigger club than Chelsea. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so one of the main things, one of the main reasons to come here was uh, TV being here and he's got such a good reputation and you're reading the press and that he's interested. But to be honest, it was Jim Gregory that wanted me. He's like, you know, I think he enjoyed players with a bit of flair and a bit of, uh, a bit of arrogance and uh, he'd seen me playing and I think he said to Terry, what do you think? And, and they agreed to sign me and uh, I couldn't wait to get here. You, meant, you mentioned Terry and he was great and he had a fabulous career, not only here but what he went on to. Go on, tell the guys, how good was Terry Venables as a coach and manager? Well, it's, it's complicated for me because like, I, I, I prefer to listen to people like Stanley Bowles, Randy Marsh, the managers and coaches, and, I, you know, and I've watched these players and I try to play like them. And so when I signed here, I, I used to bump into Stan Bowles quite a bit and he'd say, you know, I've been watching it. Don't listen to what coach is telling <laughs> And I say to him, I said, yeah, but the reason I came here is because he got TV, it was fantastic. And I went to see TV and I said, look, Stan said to me I shouldn't listen to coaches. And he said, well, why not? He said, he thinks I'm, you should have faith in your own ability. He said, yeah, but you need to listen to me, you need to work hard. So I'll tell you what, if you score a goal or make a goal every game, you don't have to listen to me. <laughs> that's what I did. <laughs> so, uh, Brody, you, you, you mentioned, and while we're on that subject, you know, we lost, we as a club, the game of football, lost the great legendary Stan Bowles. You came here following in the footsteps of Rodney. Stan, you wore the number 10 shirt, the iconic number 10 shirt. Did that put a little bit of extra pressure on you, or did you, did you embrace that and say, let me have that? If you're a proper number 10, you don't feel pressure. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just want to be... The, the, the number 10 shirt is not the same in every club. Yeah. The, and QPR, for me, is the most important English club 
that the, the number 10 is relevant. So to be the number 10 of QPR, and like behind people like Rodney Marsh and Stan Bowles, that was my dream, that's what I played football for. And so, you know, I was so proud to be number 10 here, it was fantastic. We mentioned some of your achievements, not only you, but the team that you played in. 1982, uh, second division team, you go to a cup final. Memories of that, both the games? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've actually just bumped into Garth Crooks uh, at lunch in the same, same, same pub as him. And uh, we were talking about it, and you know, it's, we, we gave everything to win that game, you know, to, to, to draw the first one, extra time, and then, and then in one week we played in front of 190,000 fans. And, and to do that and come away with a 1 0 defeat was hard to take. But my, my dream was to play in a cup final, and I did it. And, uh, you know, I don't think QPR could, could, could dream of being in a final like that against Tottenham, against the local neighbour. It was just fantastic. Everything was fantastic. And great lads. Throughout the team, you know, your Bob Hazels and Terry Fenix, real characters and talented players as well, you know. Uh, and we were unlucky in the final. Clive broke his leg, didn't he? And like, you know, I think Clive's always going to get you a goal. And that's, that's really what we liked in that game. Someone who could just make a goal. So season after that, you, you, you gained promotion. Again, yeah. special memories for you, but not only you, you've mentioned some of the players in the team, you know, special for the club. Yeah. My, my big memory of the promotion is being up in the stand and all the fans coming into the stand and there being lots of girls there and I kissed every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> every one of them. <laughs> so uh, that is one of my best memories of being up in the <laughs> I know, obviously, Simon Lee li uh, lives overseas, so um, and you're involved in football, but you must keep an eye on QPR, watching the results, what you see from afar. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, just, I mean, it's, it's sometimes a bit of a hard watch, because, like, uh, you know, if you're involved in football and you like attacking, flowing, imaginative, spontaneous football, probably now's not your best time, you know? It's like, uh, it's become, I think, with Guardiola, too many people have followed his, his way of playing where they try and suffocate teams. And so uh, I, f I find some games a hard watch, particularly the higher up you go. Uh, I enjoy, you know, I've watched a couple of QPR games and they've done alright. I've watched Sheffield Wednesday and playing against today, I watched them twice in one week and had to go to the hospital. <laughs> So, you know, I'm, I'm expecting, I'm expecting Wednesday to get trounced today. Yeah. To be I'll, be, I'll be very disappointed. And by the way, I could say I did play for QPR at Sheffield Wednesday, and we won 3-1, and I scored all three. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, 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 I'm itching to get on that. <laughs> And lastly, Simon, because uh, you, you've got a busy day, you know, you, you played in front of, where well, you played at this great club, played in front of these great fans, you can see how highly they still regard you. Massive game for the club today. What message would you give to the Rangers fans today? Just uh, do what you've been doing, back in the club. I, I look at some of the message boards, and I see some other clubs' message boards, and they're critical, critical, critical. And QPR, the fans are behind the team, they're, they're optimistic, they're, they're humorous. One of the greatest things about a QPR fan, for me, is a sense of humor and the ability to see the other side of things. And, and really, um, I, 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 oh, what are you gonna say? I, I, I just think that the QPR fans deserve something. That, they deserve to be a level higher. But the fans do. Does everyone involved with the club? I'm not sure. But the fans, the fans really deserve it. For me, they were the best fans that I ever played in front of. So I think, um, I think that's a great way to leave. You know, we're, we've had some fantastic players in our history of our football club. Simon is one of them. Once again, give it up for Simon Stayroom!